Watercolor is my deep breath. And a deep breath needs oxygen, right? Oxygen is outside, so let's get outside and make some art, friends. I was never a big hiker, but there was something about getting outside. The smell of the air is different. It enlivens your spirit. And so when I'm feeling least inspired, yeah, you know the feeling where you just, you can't even imagine what you could possibly paint. The best thing to do is change your environment. Okay, so today's video's got two agendas. I want to talk about painting outside and all the challenges that come with it. But the reason, the, the reason that you absolutely need to try to get outside once in a while and make some art. And then of course, I'm going to do a landscape and show you how I did it. Now, before we get into this, Edward Abbey was a serious rebel in like all the ways. And we won't go down that rabbit hole. But the, the thing is, friends, he spent a lot of time outside. And this is one of my favorite, favorite pieces he ever wrote. Listen to it. Try to absorb it. Stick with me. It's worth it, friends. May your trails be crooked, winding, lonesome, dangerous, leading to the most amazing view. May your mountains rise into and above the clouds, may your rivers flow without end, meandering through pastoral valleys, tinkling with bells, past temples and castles and poets' towers, into a dark primeval forest where tigers belch and monkeys howl, through miasmal and mysterious swamps, and down into a desert of red rock, blue mesas, domes and pinnacles and grottos, and endless stone, and down again into a deep, vast, ancient, unknown chasm, where bars of sunlight blaze on profiled cliffs, where deer walk across the white sand beaches, where storms come and go, and lightning clangs upon the high crags, where something strange and more beautiful and more full of wonder than your deepest dreams waits for you just beyond the next turning of the canyon walls. Okay, so why did I read you a quote that has monkeys belching friends? Listen to it again, but the, the idea is this. We have to change our environment. We have to shake ourselves up. And once we step out of the norm of our experience, we have no idea what's just beyond the next turn of the canyon walls, right? Okay, enough poetry. Let's get outside with our palette and make some art and stuff. Okay, friends, I love Zion. So this video is all from a recent trip of mine to Zion National Park. I hiked a little, I painted a lot, and I learned a ton. So you might hear painting on plain air. I don't speak French, but it is a French term and it means in the outdoor air or something like that. So the idea of painting outside, it has a lovely ring to it, right? So for today's video, friends, I'm using one of my favorite handmade palettes, Case for Making. It's incredible. It has a really small footprint, so it travels beautifully. I have a little travel spray bottle. I'm gonna spray that down. And of course, I'm using the Art for Joy's Sake watercolor brushes. And I've got Academy watercolor paper. It's a 10 by 10 inch square, perfect. And you might be wondering, whoa, you're just sitting cross-legged and you're gonna paint in your lap. Indeed, friends. I don't do easels outside. I don't get fancy. I just find a spot that makes sense, use the rocks as my side tables, and get on with life. So this is tip number one. Whether you're walking down the street, sitting on a park bench, or you're hiking up into the mountains, keep your materials, your supplies super duper simple, friends. You don't need a little bench. You don't need the full palette. You don't need all the brushes keep it super clean and simple. Now I realize some of you may not physically be able to get out and do any sorts of long distances. So let me tell you what, just sitting by an open window in the sun, that's a change in your environment. Now, if you do feel like you can get out, but you want a comfortable place to sit, just take one of those cool fold up chairs that you can sling over your shoulder. No shame in that. One of the biggest things that is crazy overwhelming when you're outside is figuring out what to paint. Everything is so big and so in your face and vast. So I actually use my iPhone as a viewfinder. So I literally just take a bunch of pictures and I decide which one I like best. And as I'm painting, I refer not only to the actual outdoors in front of me for reference, but I refer to my iPhone too to make sure I'm keeping the composition and the perspective in check. It's not cheating, it's good stuff, try it. 
Roughing out the basic shapes of the landscape is so important. I'm going to link to a video in the information section below where I really dive deep in how to do just that. I'm going right in with my three quarter inch wash brush and I am roughing in the distant red rock with just some basic column shapes. And I've also indicated with a few strokes that horizon line and I'm going in with some yellow and I am indicating that next layer of land that's in front of that horizon line. And you know what, friends? I am making stuff up. I'm making concessions as I paint here. And that's the beauty of landscapes. Once you get the idea of breaking down the basic shapes, you can kind of zhuzh and do your own thing as you go. All right, friends, it's the time you've been waiting for. Three reasons that getting outside helps your art. And as I go through these, I'm going to just let the painting roll happen. But friends, just know at this point, I'm adding details, a lot of details into that back horizon line because that's really my focal point. Using my cat's tongue brush, but you use a number two round if you don't have a cat's tongue. Think about the colors you're choosing. Think about the amount of paint that's on your brush. And at this point, you're defining, not over defining the basic shapes that you established when this all started. Reason number three, that getting outside and creating art is a huge game changer for you. Your senses are on high alert when you're outside, you, when you change your environment, really, and you're feeling, seeing, smelling everything more intently. So imagine what such a heightened sense of existing can do for your art. Imagine. So when folks ask me, Christy, what's the one thing I can do when I'm feeling uninspired? and I don't know what to paint. I always tell them, get out of your current space, preferably outside, but change things up, change your environment. Friends, give this video a boop if you're having a good time and head to comments to fuss and discuss about making art outside. Would you do it? Do you do it? Why, why not? And if you're on the fence, what is holding you back? Let's get the conversation going. Okay, reason number two, that getting outside and making art is gonna level up your art journey. It gives you clarity, both physiologically and emotionally. Moving a bit, literally even just a slow stroll from your front door to a bench 15 feet away can change your outlook. Even just sitting near a sunny window, opening it up and letting the fresh breeze fill your space can change the way you feel and your approach. There is science to all this, friends, but I'm not a scientist, so you can go read more about it from trusted outlets. But just know this. In the last two years, I've been on a health journey and I'm not gonna stay here for long, so stick with me. I have started to walk every single day. And friends, I can tell you this, the fresh air, the deep breaths, the mental clarity has gone through the roof. It has changed my life and gratefully has changed my art. I look forward to it. I crave it. And now I'm very in tune when my creative brain needs a reset and I need to step outside in a new environment. All right, friends, the number one reason that getting outside makes your art better. It's a challenge, okay? Painting outside serves you an overwhelming, unbelievable at times amount of challenging moments. Okay, stay with me. Don't get discouraged. You saw it. You probably thought it. Like, Christy, you're just going to sit on a rock, cross-legged, and just, yeah, my foot fell asleep. The wind took my palette a couple of times. The wind actually took my watercolor paper and created some smudges. Yeah, it happens. But you know what, friends? When you are forced to work within a challenging environment, the rate at which you learn and access new skills is mind blowing. Um, okay, you know what else is mind blowing? That sky technique that I just did, oh my gosh. So I laid down a little bit of color there where the top of the horizon line, those orange red rock mountains met the sky. I added a little bit of blue, brushed it up a little bit, and then I sprayed it. Now just make sure that your paper is tilted away from you so the color doesn't run back where you don't want it to, but oh my gosh, please try a sky like that. All right, friends, seriously, the challenge, the rate at which you are going to learn in a challenging environment is you cannot compare it. There's no comparison. So what happens when you rise up? You learn quicker out of necessity. You become more brave because you're making uncomfortable decisions quickly. 
You get more focused because when you're pummeled with distraction, I could go on and on, but you get it, right? Oh, this is good stuff, friends. This is good stuff. All right, there is one more killer way to get better at art faster. And this is a big, huge mindset shift that you really don't want to miss out on in this art journey. So watch this next and get at it. Happy painting, friends. Mm -hmm.